Hello, this is Bob Grace Sr. Welcome to Ministry Moments, Lord willing, every Friday, three o'clock central time. <clears throat> we take some time and uh, it's, it's not a long broadcast. It's very, very simple, punctual, succinct, and uh, it, it, practical things will be of help to you. But uh, thank you for joining us each week. If you will go ahead and subscribe, to, you can go to Ministry Moments YouTube and subscribe. That way you'll get this every week, just, just like that. And if you want to go to solvechurchproblems.com and subscribe there, <clears throat> you not only get this broadcast, but you'll get a lot of other uh, free sermons from there, starting back in 1980. My voice is a little higher, but still preaching the same thing. And so many helps there. There'll be a tremendous help to you. And please get my latest book, The Lost Commandment, if you would. Go to bereanpublications.com, and you can order that book there. Now, today, <clears throat> I want to talk to you about teamwork. Uh, it is essential that you realize that the people that God gathers around you are to work with you and your co-laborers together. And the work cannot be done by, by one man. Um, <clears throat> I, I can get, I lead people to Christ. I can get them down the aisle. I can get them baptized. If I do that just myself, that's 52 in one year, 26 of them stick. That's 26 we didn't have before but you need all the teamwork you've got to have a uh, for example at the invitation time i had 72 different spots that people were assigned to with once the invitation began i'm talking about uh men uh, lined up to do altar work ladies lined up to do altar work name takers um so many people were involved just in that invitation now you've also got to, if you don't have a structured sunday school program a graded sunday school program with a lot of workers we had 171 sunday school classes at our at our peak and you've got to have the teams got to be working together in unison to get the job done so i'm going to talk to you about teamwork today all right um you need to understand that everybody that works with you and you work with them are co-laborers and God has placed us there, each of us there. I can't play the piano, but thank God for Mrs. Pettikoffer and uh, brother who took care of all the instruments and brother Duckett took care of the orchestra. He's in heaven now, God bless his memory. And that 70 voice choir, 40 piece orchestra. Well, that takes a lot of work. And it's not just that, you've got the ushers, you've got the PA, you've got, we had 40 bus routes. It's a couple of hundred bus workers. There's just so much involved once you get a church that's going and growing and you've got to operate as a team, this is not a solo <laughs> event. This is a team event. All right. With that in mind, let me give you some thoughts about teamwork. Number one, God placed the team members there. God placed the team members there. So in this team that you have in this local New Testament church that you're leading or a part of, all of these uh, team, team members were placed there by God. All of us have different abilities. And those of, I couldn't, I, I, I wish I could sing. I sing in the, in the, in the shower. My, my wife's poodles are gone now. I don't know how they died. I wonder what happened. But uh, they would howl while I sang in the, in the shower. And then uh, she would say to me, do you mind quit singing? And I said, would you mind telling those dogs quit howling? And uh, by the way, if you're going to get a dog, get a dog. A poodle is not a dog. But God placed the team uh, there. So he, everybody that's been placed there, God brought together. Romans talks about mutual faith. The pastor looks up and says, okay, God, I, I'm, I'm receiving this and I'm going to implement it. Well, then God will send people to you that have a heart for soul winning, a heart for Holy Ghost power, a heart for the bus ministry a heart for the King James Bible. God brought those people to you and to use them and to be effective as a team is the secret of, of Dr. Lee Robertson. It was the secret of Dr. Tom Malone, Dr. Jack Hiles, Curtis Hudson, on and on, all great men who had a, assembled a team that God sent them and they knew how to work with them. All right, so number one, God places the team members there. You don't ever forget that. God places them there. Number two, honor those working with you honor those working with you. Um, you ought to have a, a workers banquet or a leaders banquet every year and give out awards. Honor those people. Number three, respect their area 
and expertise. Respect their area and expertise. So when it came to LCA, Dr. Chuck Zinn in heaven now, God bless him, his memory. But uh, Dr. Zinn was over the schools, both our school and the uh, bus kids school. Now, when people came to me a question about the school, I sent them to him. I could have answered the question, but that's his area. He's the expert in that area. Now, if he has a problem with something and doesn't know quite how to, what to do, he can come to me. But I want to send them to him. I want all of that to go to them. If it comes to uh, the school bill, I send them to the financial department. I'm not going to get involved in that. Now, if they have a problem, comes up, they can always come back to me. I'm just saying respect their area and expertise and help them <clears throat> to be held up as the expert in that area. If it was a youth uh, department, I sent them to Brother Bob. If it was whatever it might be, I sent them to the appropriate the bus ministry. I sent them to, sent them to our bus director. Now, I'm just simply saying that uh, you've got to respect their area. Uh, the, the mechanics that worked on, we had 15,000 square foot bus barn. That was a tremendous blessing. And uh, we had three mechanics at the time. Where, well, that's their area. <clears throat> I don't want them coming down and getting in the accounting part of the ministry. And I don't want the accounting part of the ministry to go get involved in the, in the bus mechanics. So we're talking about teamwork here. E essential. Essential. Number one, God places those team members there. You respect that. Uh, you respect it. Number two, honor those working with you. Have a, a workers bank or leaders bank, whatever you want to call it, once a year and honor them. Uh, and honor them during their publicly, uh, brag on them, privately brag on them. All right, so number one, God placed the team members there. Remember that. And you had a part in it too. You chose, you chose them. Brother Al said one time about somebody need to be fired. He said, I have to stop and think. <clears throat> it's just as much my fault as it is their fault. I put them in that position. Why should their family suffer? because uh, I made a mistake in placing people in certain spots. Sometimes it's not the position that, uh, it, not the person that's bad, it's the position, the placing in the position is bad. So you may want to move people around to think, find their niche. <clears throat> and that's your job as an overseer, as the bishop, if you please. So God places the team members there. Don't ever forget that. We're, we're, he placed you there as a pastor. He placed them there as leaders to help you. Number two, honor those working with you. Number three, respect their area and expertise. Help them become more of an expert in their area. Number four, point others to them. Point others to them. <clears throat> and there's a question about the school. Point them towards your principal. Uh, but if you have a bus kid school, then point them towards the principal of the bus kids school. If it's a if it's a mechanical problem, then send them to the mechanics, send them to the bus director if it's the bus business. You see what I'm saying? All right. So God placed the team members there. You, you had a vital part in it. You helped select them, but God placed it on your heart and you asked them to, to be a part and you be patient with them. And number two, honor those working with you. Number three, respect their area and expertise. Help them to become the expert in their area. Point others to them. Number five, allow those who love you to love them. Allow those who love you to love them. I remember Brother House telling a story about Jim Lyons. Jim Lyons came from Miller Road. He was a businessman and, uh, and got saved and got baptized part of Brother House's team in, uh, at Miller Road. So Brother House was called to Hammond, Indiana, First Baptist Church. So he went there. Jim Lyons came with him. And uh, <laughs> Brother House said, why, they bought Jim Lyons a whole set of tires for his car. And uh, he said, before I knew it, that green-eyed monster of jealousy started creeping into my mind. And I thought, well, they didn't buy me any tires. And uh, it's a great story that he tells. And then he understood the thing. The more they loved him, the greater their capacity to love. And that was the idea, to get the people to love. And they'd have love for the pastor and maybe a different type of love for, for Jim Lyons. They may have liked Jim Lyons. But anyway, uh, point being, allow them who love you to love them, the other team members. Don't be jealous of that. Thank God their capacity to love is being increased. All right, number six, brag on them publicly and privately. I've already mentioned this, but I'll mention again. Brag on them publicly and privately. You need to thank God for those members you've got on your team. You need to thank God for it. 
listen, I receive phone calls all the time. Can you find me a music man? Can you find me a music coordinator? Can you find me a teacher? Can you find me a principal? Can you find me this? Can you find me that? And some say, look, I've been looking and I can't find anybody. And then they would look at me and say, boy, you're very fortunate to have them. We're blessed. Yes, blessed. Thank God that they're there. You let one of them pass. And then when Brother Duckett went home to be with the Lord, he, he, he died on a Tuesday before going to Texas Baptist College Chapel to lead singing. And uh, oh, it was a blow. It was a shock and a blow. Well, I, when I got his three ring notebook with all of his duties on it that I met with him once a year about, man, I couldn't believe all the stuff he did. It took three men to take his place. You let one of them pass or go to heaven or some of them leave and you'll find out just exactly what they're doing. You better thank God for your team leaders and your, and your other workers, your co-workers. So number one, God placed them there. You are part of it. You chose them. So don't be so quick to complain about it. You, you chose them. Number two, honor those working with you. You can have a banquet once a year. Uh, three, respect their area and expertise. Build up their expertise. Help them to become a better expert in their area. Uh, that's why you need to meet with them individually, by the way. Number four, point others to them. Someone comes to you, yes, you could answer. Absolutely, you could give an answer. But why not send them to the person that's over that area and help them to deal with solutions and problems and they become more of an expert. That'll benefit you and benefit the ministry. Um, allow those uh, who love you to love them. All right, number six, brag on them publicly and privately. Brother Howes had this thing and, 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 and it works. You get a new staff member, pick on them in a sermon. So just pick on them. And boy, the people who were rallying that staff, that poor staff member, the preacher's picking on him. And that uh, was one of the little tools that Brother Hiles had. I've used it and it works. So uh, brag on them publicly and privately and, and pick at them a little bit. If you feel like they're not being loved, like you think they should be uh, honored and loved, that's the way to do it. Never overlap duties. You want, you'll have more trouble than Carter's got liver pills. I don't, I don't, does Carter still have liver pills, but never overlap duties. Don't, don't let one area get involved in another's area. You keep those, that wall and separate them. Next, brainstorm with them. I would meet to, before we had a spring campaign, fall campaign, a big day or whatever it might be. We brainstormed the soul winning clinic, 29 years. We had a national soul winning clinic. What a blessing, what a blessing that was. But brainstorm with them, all the ideas. And by the way, I only got my way about 25% of the time when they brought up ideas and we, we voted on ideas in these meetings. Oh my goodness, I got my way about 20. Somebody would say, Pastor, that, that's not gonna work. Well, thank God for the bravery. And, uh, but brainstorm with them. Next, pray for them. I had a list. I went down every day and prayed for every single staff member that I had. Satan, it's tough enough. You know, you stop really if you had a business. Do you know how hard it is to, to keep this business going? The finances, the sales, the people coming in business. Do you know how hard it is? Try, try coming up with a $62,300 budget every week and Satan fighting you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You need to pray for them. Pray that God put a hedge around them and, and protect them. Next, defend them. Defend them. Don't believe everything you hear. You're not going to believe this, but some people may not like a staff member and they may be looking for some negative, but you defend them. You defend them. I expect them to defend me and not to believe everything they hear. Don't believe everything you hear. Don't believe everything, half of what you read. Uh, so number one, God placed the team there. You were part of it. You chose them. Thank God for it, for that team. Let, let one of them leave you and see what uh, consternation that would be. Well, that was a big word, wasn't it? Number two, uh, honor those working with you. Number three, respect their area and expertise. Number four, point others to them. Next, allow those who love you to love them. Next, brag on them publicly and privately. Next, never overlap duties. Uh, you can't have two women in the same kitchen. It's not going to work. Uh, brainstorm with them. Uh, pray for them. Defend them. This is the last point. Aren't you proud of me? Number 11, help them to reach their potential. Help them to reach their potential. There's room for growth. And you ought to help them 
to grow. But you do that by some of the stuff I've said here, but you do it by sending people to them. If they have a question about the buses, you send them to the bus director. Question about our public uh, bus kid school, send them to the principal. A principal of the a regular school, send them to the principal. You see what I'm saying? Financial questions, send them to the financial department. What you're going to do here, you're going to, and I always told the staff members, when, you, when we meet, you come in and I have meetings with you. And that's very important to have individual meetings. And uh, I would, don't ever bring me a problem without five solutions. You bring me a problem. I'm, I'm not opposed to that, but I can think of more, more, more problems than you could ever think of. But I want you to bring me five potential solutions for that one problem. That way, it's your area, it's your, your expertise, and I can have an opportunity to choose those five. I don't need to think about problems. I, I, all, all, I have to keep three by five cards with me. I'm writing stuff down all the time. So when you come to me, staff member, and you bring a, a problem, bring with you five solutions because you would know better than anybody, and I want you to study it out, and I want you to know better than others. Teamwork, oh my goodness. If you ever want to have a successful, growing, soul-winning, hellfire, damnation, bus-running uh, church, you're going to have to have a team. And when you have a team, it ought to be a team that's valued. And you know how hard it is to, to get that team together. When you get that team together, then you value them. Well, just some thoughts about teamwork. Teamwork is very, very important. Every great church that I've known and been a part of and I've seen uh, had a, a great team, a great team. And it's not, uh, it's not by accident. Uh, it's on purpose. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of uh, Ministry Moments every Friday, three o'clock central time, Ministry Moments, YouTube, go and subscribe, go to softchurchproblems.com and subscribe there. A lot of great thoughts and material and ideas and things that'll be a blessing to you there. Softchurchproblems.com. Go to BereanPublications.com and then you can uh, order books, our books from there. Be patient with us because we've, we've sold out. Uh, it's amazing. And uh, a lot of our books. And so we're having to uh, reprint them and, uh, and update them and everything. So go to BereanPublications.com. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of this broadcast. And I'll see you, Lord willing, next Friday. Now, Saturday, soul winning time. Uh, this, is, this is the time. This is the time. You get out there, win people to Christ, line up your guests, your visitors, your converts, and get them to come on Sunday. But Saturday, take advantage of it. Preparation day for the Lord's day. God bless you. Take care.